Hello once again everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio. So the last episode I ran over what I've been doing with this um, all this science nonsense up here and since then I've gone in and tweaked all those little things that I completely screwed up. So now we have um, things actually working. There's We may have a bit of this, yeah we've got a few of the purple science being produced. May even be some of the pink. Yes, a few of these although those inserted are all the wrong way around so that needs fixing too. But let's not worry about that for now. The thing I was, the other issue I was having was that I've run out of steel completely. There's just none of it being brought out to all of these places in the base. So I'm going to run over what the problem is here and uh, and why I'm having all these issues with it. So down here in the um, in the massive metal monstrosity, I've been making I've been making steel among other things. Um, it's this one here. Yes, here we go. <coughs> So the steel steel ingots are coming in, they're being eat, eaten up by this machine and then spat out of steel. So so there is steel being made, it's just making it very, very slowly. And that's because these ingots are coming up relatively slowly from here, from this um, this facility that turns the iron ingots and coal into uh, sorry, oxygen, into steel ingots. And that's happening slowly because there's not very much coming in on this on this stream here, on this belt. And if we follow that back, we'll find it's because there's not very much being produced by not very much iron processed iron no ironing whatever that stuff is that's the particular type of iron being produced by these um, pellet presses so pellets there we go because there's not enough um, iron ore coming in and that's because these machines are all stopped and that <laughs> as we carry on back up the chain is because there's no catalyst being fed in there's no catalyst in the station <clears throat> and the reason I'm short of catalyst if we go down here to where the catalyst is supposed to be made is because we've run out of the um, run out of this crushed stone so as you can see it sort of all just pushes back towards the crushed stone and crushed stone is being produced in all kinds of places like up here we've got it coming out of the um, all of the all of these uh, crushers here it's coming out of here being fed into the into these um, into these warehouses but it's coming in relatively slowly and it's definitely being produced much more slowly than it's being used up so that's why it's a problem um, and it's being produced up here as well. These these machines that when they, they crush this, uh, this sapphire, yeah, sapphire, sapphire, a dark blue one, they produce some crushed stone. But in order to then process that, they need to use something like I don't know, um, maybe twice as much crushed stone in the form of catalyst to to sort it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the ratios are. I could probably work it out, but I'm not going to. So it's a it's a net negative process. There's more crushed stone being used being used to process it than is being produced from actually crushing the stone. When you add into that, we're using crushed stone over here, one of these stations, maybe this one. No, not this one, but one one of these stations. It's, yeah, this one is supposed to be pulling in crushed stone and then passing it up here where it gets turned into stone by these construction machines and then turned into bricks by this one and into landfill by these ones. <coughs> and then these bricks are over going over here being turned to concrete bricks and so on so there and any and some of the science things up here we've got this one that makes walls for the uh, for the military science we've got the this one this one making bricks for the um, for the for the electric furnaces to, to get to turn into the uh, purple science <coughs> So there's quite a few places here where, where the stone is getting used up and it's just getting chomped up much, much faster than it's being produced. So the first thing I thought, well, in order to get around this problem, we'll. Um, it turns out you can also turn this crystal dust, which I'm using to make the green catalyst, you can also turn that into crushed stone, sorry, into stone slurry, is it uh, mineral sludge even, <clears throat> by turning the crystal slurry, going through a filter over here with these machines, which I've just set up fairly recently. The problem is that requires uh, mineralized water, which is, to be fair, produced when you, um, when you, <laughs> when you turn the... Uh, which stage is it? When you turn one of these things, I think it's, I think it's when you turn the sulfur, sulfur, sulfuric waste water back into um, back into purified water and sulfur. It also does produce mineralized water, but once again, it produces it much more slowly than it gets used up. So, in the short term, I should probably come down here and whack in something that will make mineralized water out of something else. How do we make mineralized water? <coughs> So it's that one. That's how I'm producing it at the moment from the from the waste that comes out. <laughs> you can make it from crushed stone, which I don't have, hence the problem. 
Um, okay, you can wash out electrolyzer electrodes, but I'm not doing that. Nitric waste. So basically, there isn't there isn't a way to make it, with the possible exception of this one. And I would have to check to see whether this was going to be a net positive compared to just turning it straight into sludge myself. It was turning the crushed stone straight into the sludge. So this means that when I'm making the green catalyst, it will put in a bit of a boost and give me a bit of extra brown catalyst. But it's not something that will actually run on its all by itself. So that's that's the current problem. Now it turns out that if you you can also make this mineral sludge from thermal water, which is the stuff you dig out of these orange blobs on the uh, on the map. So there's a couple down there. There's a load up there. I think I'll go for that one because that's going to be relatively easy to uh, to liberate and safe up. I could just build a wall in there and across there somehow. So yeah, I'll probably go for these because there's a ridiculous quantity of 96,000 percent. That's plenty. Should sounds like plenty. However, in order to dig up the um, thermal water you need to have a thermal water extractor which requires titanium and reinforced concrete bricks and elect blue circuits but I've made blue circuits that's that part is fine but the um, the titanium is a little bit of a problem I don't have that on my system here I didn't have concrete bricks until relatively recently but it turns out concrete is just uh, lime and coal Ooh, that might be for the power in the furnaces and Oh, that's making lime. That's turning limestone into lime. There we go. And then if you combine that and silicon and sand, I think, or maybe just with silicon, then you produce cement, which you can then combine with, um, I think this is a stone, um, stone and probably sand to make concrete. And you can turn, combine that with bricks to make concrete brick. Why does covering a brick in concrete make a concrete brick? Anyway, <clears throat> so you can do that. You can also stick stick some steel in this as well, and you can make reinforced um, concrete bricks. But I don't really need those yet. I just thought, well, I might as well might as well add some build, some machines on to build those because you never know they might come in useful. Uh, so that the, co the concrete the concrete bricks wasn't a problem. The problem is titanium. Uh, titanium is a little bit tricky. Uh, so I don't know if you remember from the last episode I was talking about making the silicon here. So let's let's recap. Let's go a little bit further back. Talk about let's talk about lead first. Lead is rel is one of the relatively simple ones. You take in two different types of ore, crush them, mix them with a catalyst, which, due to as I've been explaining, we've run out of completely, um, and that makes ingots of the appropriate thing. You can then smelt them down into into uh, sorry, it makes ore of the appropriate thing. So lead ore, which you can then turn into ingots here. And for some reason, I'm feeding out lead ingots instead of um, instead of lead plates, but uh, that probably seemed like a good idea at the time. Next up in the complexity scale is things like silicon. <clears throat> so silicon, you feed in your two uh, two ore types, but then you have to float them. As I, I think I went over this, you have to, so which means you feed in some purified water, you get sulfuric sulfuric waste water out. Um, it's an extra step. You then combine them with the green catalysts, and that spits out the ore and for reason, and because I'm turning the silicon, melting the silicon ore elsewhere in order to make it into into ingots and wafers and things, I've kept that as an ore. And that made more sense at the time. If I some for some reason need silicon ingots, then I can always make them here. But but that's not an issue at the moment. Titanium is the next step up the complexity ch uh, tree. So for titanium, you need three different types of ores. So I've got sapphirite, st st styrotite, and uh, rubite. They're all getting crushed in these first machines, then floated in the second machines, which again requires the um, purified water in and the sulfuric waste water out. And then we're, um, what we're doing here, we're leaching them as well. So turning these, the chunks into crystals. And then once I've done all that, they can then be sorted, all three of them together, along with the orange catalyst. That's so the third type of catalyst, but fortunately that's just made by mixing the other two. So that's relatively straightforward. And that produces this titanium ore, uh, which can then be turned into titanium, processed titanium, and then possibly nuggets. But there's a, there was a problem I ran into. If we have a look back in here at the titanium, um, you can make the processed titanium. That's fine, doing that, and you can turn that into titanium tetrachloride. But if you want to turn it into titanium pellets, you need a research which I haven't got yet that requires it require only requires purple science though. So I could potentially go and get this one because I've got a bit of purple science, except. I kind of need steel in order to get enough purple science to research this, so I'm probably going to have to ignore this one for now and go for the slightly more... Well, it's not a more awkward recipe, it's probably an easier recipe, but it's going to need to be changed later. 
Carbon is a solved problem. Chlorine gas is a relatively solved problem. I think you basically take water, take water, you make it salty, and then you split it down into into the into chlorine and hydrogen, and then, yeah, it's, it, that that's not too difficult. Um, and then you sponge off it as well, apparently. And the sponges can be turned into ingots, so it, it's all manageable. I just might have to rip it out later to do it a different way. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, there's a couple of extra complexities in here, like for example, down here it turns out that the um, the crushed rubite, when you float it, releases nitric wastewater inst instead of sulfuric wastewater, so that needs to be dealt with separately. And the this stage, the leaching requires nitric acid instead of sulfuric acid, um, which I don't have quite so much of, but fortunately you can make it from the nitric wastewater. But again, if you notice that, the, that this belt has filled up, and this pipe is empty, it's yet another one of those things where the process is, it looks really obvious. You go, oh yeah, okay, the side effect from that one can be made into the, the, the ingredient I need for this next stage, except it can't in sufficient quantities. <laughs> so, um, so that's an additional complication. I'm going to have to work out some way of getting a bit of extra additional nitric acid for this. However, as you can see by the fact that we've got, yeah, some of the uh, crystal um, rubite crystals and going into here and to titanium out. The basic idea is working. We're just a bit short on some of the input resources. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, These, this is going to be a couple of things I need to do. I'm going to need to work out how to get nitric acid. The other problem I've got is that the next level of the next few steps of this are going to require machines that are going to require steel. And there isn't any steel up here at the moment. So, yeah, I'm I'm probably going to have to go and grab whatever relatively small amount of steel is available and chuck it in here and just, just to make all the machines I need. Or maybe I'll actually go and grab it manually and hand feed the, one, the specific ones to, to get it out. So in a slightly awkward position because there is not quite as there's not quite enough. The, the, fa the factory isn't running quite well enough off its own bat to in order for me for me to upgrade it to the next level. So it's a bit of a hassle. Um, but nothing insurmountable. I think I, sh I should be able to deal with that. Let's see. So I think that's most of what I've done. I did also build up this bridge across here of robo ports because I found though when I started to build over here, especially if it was things that came from over here, they were getting over the middle of this lake and then running out of battery and having to go up here to charge. It just seemed like an awfully long way around for them to be going. And obviously I'm doing quite a lot of building down here because I'm trying to get the bloody silicon, uh, no, titanium up and running. However, once I have got titanium up and running, that'll allow me to effectively unlock, for want of a better word, the next level of these things. So, whilst if we look at the uh, chemical plants as an example, we've got the Mark 1s that take um, steel, iron steel and yellow boards. The Mark 2s take steel slightly more so and the other sort of yellow boards. The Mark 3s take brass and red boards. So, which is where I've got to at the moment, and then the red ones take the blue boards and titanium and titanium gears, titanium pipes. But that's not a problem. If I've got titanium, I can make those. So, it's getting that that it's a little, little bit more complicated with each with each um, stage you go through. Uh, is it two way stood? Uh, yeah, that looks even harder. Is there another level? No, the, the Mark IV is the, is the highest level. So I think once I get to that point, I'll have basically all of the machines. It's then a case of worrying about things like science production and rocketry and that sort of thing. So I think I'm not a million miles off getting to the point where I can start at least think about launching rockets. I mean, this is probably famous last words. We'll, we'll find out in um, a, <laughs> a few episodes, a number of hours, should we say. So in summary... I don't have any steel and I don't have any stone. I don't have any steel because I don't have any iron. I don't have any iron because I don't have any catalyst. I don't have any catalyst because I don't have any stone. Um, I also don't have any catalyst because I don't have any thermal water. And I don't have any thermal water because I don't have any titanium. I don't have titanium at the moment because I don't have steel. So there's a bit of a circular dependency there, but I think I can I can short circuit it by um, by just producing steel at a slower rate and 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 taking over just about enough to, to build things up, and that's how I managed to get these leaching plants in and that and uh, leaching plants in that's these ones and so on. So so I think it's going to be manageable, and I guess I need to go off and play with that. 
one of the other things I'm trying to do is get all of the all of the construction stuff that's on this bus over here split off onto this bus and doing science up here. I'm not quite there yet. I think I've got everything that's being done across here, so this bit can probably be ripped out. This oh I haven't I'm not doing drills. That's something I've missed out. Um, this is science that can go. This is circuits that can go. Science, yeah. I'm not doing um, I'm not doing inserters and I'm not doing belts. So this lot needs to be copied over there, and I can probably put the next levels in as well. Um, see what see what's next after blue inserters and red red belts. So these are going to be blue belts next, obviously. Uh, coming down here. This is oh, this is all for making red circuits. That's for and um, and bots. So that's all fine. I'm doing that. I can do that on the other bus. I'm not doing the um, solar panels just yet, but I don't see that being a serious problem because that's quite straightforward. Ditto for the um, uh, train stops and actually the train parts as well. These weapons, I suppose, I'm going to have to move over. Blue science is being built in the science area, of course. Yeah, so there's not a huge amount more that needs to be shifted over from here. But that, I think, is going to be a future project. I'm going to get on to that a bit later. But of course, once that's done, it'll it'll free up a lot of this, these other resources. A lot of this, this space in general, actually. I don't know what I'll do with it, but it'll be um, available for other things. Another thing I need to consider is how much, <laughs> how much I've got left in my mines. Uh, this is clearly completely exhausted. There's, there's a bit in, this, in the station. Uh, not quite 10,000. That's why that's not been picked up. This one's doing okay. It's still got five million. All right, let's try and count the uh, count the ores. We've got jeevalite, more than a million. Sapphirite, more than a million. Bobmonium, two million. Rubite, rubite's there, two million. Styrotite, ten million. That's going to last forever. That was sapphirite, wasn't it? Yes. Crotinium is another one. Do I have a crotinium? I must have a crotinium. Yes, there's one. Four million. Okay, these are all doing pretty well. There's another coal mine down here that's still on almost 9 million, and another rubite mine as well. So I think resource-wise, my mines are actually holding up quite well. This isn't this isn't like vanilla, where you seem to rip through mines incredibly quickly and just spend half your time going out and, and building up new outposts just to, to keep your factory ticking over. It seems that in Angel Bobs, stuff just lasts a bit longer, to be honest. I don't know whether there's it's because I'm using I'm building stuff in smaller quantities. I think that's quite likely to be honest. Um, things are so much more complicated. There's so many extra steps to go through that I don't build things in quite the same quantity I do in vanilla, and therefore I don't get through quite as many of the resources. To be honest, probably the only reason I've exhausted that coal mine is because it's all gone through these boilers down here. Right. So, I think that brings you up to date with uh, where I've got to with the factory. My current project, as I say, is the, is the uh, titanium down here. And I'm going to have to go and think about... Um, oh, sorry, the titanium down here, which includes this nitrogen, uh, nitric acid step. And I think I'm going to have to go over here and, and at least think about mineralized water. See, except no, there's, not, there's no good way of making it. The frustrating thing is, there's probably lots of other places around the base that, I, that I'm already making it and, and chucking it away because it's in the wrong place and awkward. Like one of these is bound to be. That's saline water. There we go, mineralized water. It's just being chucked away by these by these plants up here. So, but it's getting it down here is just going to be too much of a faff. So I think I'm going to pin all of my hopes and dreams on this thermal water. And in order to get that going, I'm going to get the titanium finished. So in the next episode, hopefully I'll have a shiny new uh, titanium processing facility to show you. I'll be pulling out th pulling out thermal water like it's nobody's business, and everything will be going swimmingly. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case, but we can dream, right? <laughs> anyway, you can come along to the next episode and see how it's going on, and we'll see if I've managed to fulfill any of these promises. Uh, yeah, so come along, keep me honest, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.